Hello and welcome to this section of the Circuit Analysis Tutor. And in this section we're going to begin to talk about the next major solution technique of circuits that's super, super important and that is called the mesh current method. All right, so in the previous several sections, we've talked about the node voltage method, and I think you'll agree that the node voltage method lets you solve more complicated types of circuit than, than regular solution techniques like Kirchhoff's laws with fewer equations. So basically less work on your part, but there's some uh, work involved in understanding the node voltage method, how to write the equations, and also how to make sure that you actually have enough equations to solve the entire circuit, to find the currents everywhere. All right, so the node voltage method is super, super important. The mesh current method ranks right up with the node voltage method in terms of importance. So it's, it's not really a matter of you just needing to remember one or the other one of these types of methods. You must know both of them because what you're going to find out, obviously on your test, you'll be, on your exams, you'll be asked, uh, you know, solve circuit by, by a certain method. But beyond that, you're going to find out as we work more problems that some circuits are going to lend themselves by the way that they're drawn to naturally be easy to solve with node voltage equations. Some circuits you're going to find out by the way they're drawn and how they're constructed are going to naturally lend themselves to being easily solved with the mesh current method. So it's not so much that one of these methods is better than the other, and you can just pick and choose every problem I'm going to do, node voltage or mesh current. It's a matter of having both of these, uh, these uh, methods in your, in your toolbox, so to speak, so that when the situation arises, you can pull out the proper method that makes most sense, whatever you're most comfortable with for that problem, and get, and get the answer. Now, I can also tell you up front, though, that in my opinion, I think mesh current is actually a little bit easier to deal with than node voltage, and I'll try to explain why that is as I, as I go forward. So, um, big picture, we've learned node voltage, super important. Definitely don't flush that knowledge because you're going to have to use it on your test and on real you know, practical circuits. Mesh current ranks right there, up there with node voltage. You're going to need to know it. It's going to lend itself. It's going to make your life easier solving some of these problems as we go. Um, all right, so again, one more point of comparison. For the node voltage method, if you remember, even though we called it the node voltage method, what we were really doing at every essential node that we were kind of looking at, we were writing an equation. And basically that equation was pretending that the current was leaving the node and we're basically summing the current leaving the node. So basically it was kind of like a modified Kirchhoff current law is what we were doing in the node voltage method. We were going essential node to essential node and for each node we were writing a big long equation that was basically expressing how much current is leaving that node through all of the branches and we were setting it equal to zero. So the sum of the currents leaving a node equal to zero, that's Kirchhoff's current law, right? So it's basically, you can kind of think of node voltage, even though the equations look a little bit weird, it was basically a modified, node, uh, a modified Kirchhoff current law designed to, to be streamlined for those problems so you don't have to have quite so many equations, right? That's what node voltage really was in a nutshell. Mesh current, in contrast, is basically going to be a modified Kirchhoff voltage law. That's going to be, we're going to set it up in such a way that it's going to be rock solid, bulletproof, and it's not going to require as many equations as you would otherwise need to solve. But basically, it's going to be a modified Kirchhoff voltage law as we walk around the loops in a circuit. So again, big picture, Kirk, um, the big picture for node voltages is a modified Kirchhoff current law at the nodes. The big picture for the mesh current is it's a modified Kirchhoff voltage law as we walk around the meshes in the circuit. And I'll explain what all that stuff means in a second. So before we can really do much, uh, it's easier really to explain the mesh current um, solution method with an actual circuit. So I'm going to draw a pretty simple circuit on the board, 40 volts, okay, and this guy is connected to a resistor here. We've got a resistor here. There's no resistor down below. We've got a resistor here. Nothing down below. Got a resistor here. Got a resistor over here. There is another source over here that is connected like this. And this one over here is 20 volts. All right, so let's just do some labeling. Two ohms. This is eight ohms. This is six ohms, this is six ohms, this is four ohms. So here we have everything labeled. Now one more thing I want to label for you. This is again given in the problem. 
let's call this current, let's just call it I, and let's call this V naught, the voltage across the 8 ohm resistor is V naught. And the problem states, find um, I and V naught. All right, now first of all, Obviously, you could use node voltage for this problem, right? If we did, we would just select, you know, the bottom node here as the reference node. We have an essential node here, and we have an essential node here. So we would basically be writing equations at these nodes. We know how to pop up. We would label the node voltages. We would go up. We would subtract. We would divide. We would have all these node voltage equations. And then we would find the node voltage here and the node voltage here, which would allow us basically to find everything else in the problem. So I'm trying to po point out to you that mesh current node voltage, it's not like you, you have to use one or the other, or one of them is more appropriate than, than another as far as exclusivity. You can almost always serve, solve every problem with a mesh current or node voltage. It's just an alternative method there. So what you need to do for every single mesh current problem is first identify what are the meshes. Um, what you really need to do to identify the meshes is pretend that your circuit is a cookie cutter. You know those things that, that when you bake cookies, you, you stab it into the cookie dough and then it makes a dinosaur or something like that for your, your cookie dough. You can stamp them out like that. That's, we're going to call that basically a mesh. When you look, if you were to pretend that this were a giant cookie cutter, then you would make a cookie with this guy right here. You make a cookie with this guy right here, and you make a cookie with this guy here. So if, if this were a cookie cutter, right, then you would basically make three cookies every time you push it into the dough, right? Each little individual square in there is what we call a mesh. All right, so this guy has three meshes. This is mesh one, this is mesh two, this is mesh three. So basically, anytime you look at a circuit, no matter how complicated it is, it's the number of meshes you have is the number of windows, I guess you could think of it as windows also, window panes or something, the number of individual rectangular panes. And I, and I call them rectangular or square, really, it doesn't matter. You can have, you know, if I, I could have a resistor going from here to here, that would divide this into two more meshes. One mesh would be up here, the upper triangle, the lower mesh would be down here. So it's basically literally like the cookie cutter analogy. Everywhere you would make a cookie, that is your mesh. So. We have three meshes. It's very easy with the mesh current method to realize that the number of equations you need for the mesh current method is just equal to the number of meshes you have. Here we have three meshes in this circuit, so we're gonna have three equations um, to deal with and to solve our circuit. So, we have to do some labeling, much like the node voltage method. Let's label our meshes. So what we need to do, not only have we identified our meshes, we need to label the mesh currents. So what I'm going to do, and what almost every book does, is do it like this. I'm going to draw like a little semicircular arc, and inside of it I'm going to put IA. This is mesh current IA oriented clockwise like this. Let me finish and I'll, I'll do a little bit of talking. This is mesh current I sub B. This is mesh current I sub C. So you, you have to label them something. So almost always, or at least in all of my problems, I'm gonna label them mesh A, mesh B, and mesh C. So this is gonna be called mesh current A, mesh current B, mesh current C. The goal of the mesh current se uh, solution technique is just for you to be able to actually calculate the values of these mesh currents, I, A, I, B, and I, C. So we're gonna write some equations in a minute. They're all gonna be in terms of I, A, I, B, and I, C, and you're gonna solve for I, A, I, B, and I, C. And once you know those mesh currents, you can calculate everything else in the, in, the, in the circuit. Much like the node voltage method, we label the node voltages, then we wrote equations dealing with the node voltages, and once we calculated the node voltages, we could calculate anything else in the circuit. Same thing is true here, it's just we're trying to find these mesh currents. Now, a couple things I want to point out to you. You can do it however you like. But I recommend that you, since you're learning from me, that you do it the same way I'm doing it. I think it's easier, but you, you might have a, you know, some epiphany that makes you know, sense to you to do, do it some other way. When I label my mesh currents, I always write them clockwise, like the hands of a clock. So here's the arrow going this way, IA, IB, IC. It doesn't really matter. You could label all of your meshes going the other way, if you like, and call them IA, IB, and IC, and as long as you follow the sign conventions properly, you'll still get the right answer. I label it clockwise. I suggest you do the same thing. Now, what we need to do is 
write a mesh current equation for this mesh, and then a mesh current equation for this mesh, and then a mesh current equation for this mesh. So we're gonna have, again, I told you, three equations, one for each mesh, and uh, then you can solve the problem. All right, so let's go ahead and do that. So let's write the mesh current equation for mesh A. And I literally write it on my paper like this, mesh A, and then I write the equation, you know, mess with it, simplify it, and then I write mesh B, and I do it for B, mesh C, and so on, and then you solve your system of equations. I told you a minute ago that node voltage was basically a modified Kirchhoff current law at each node. Mesh current is a modified Kirchhoff voltage law. So what we're gonna do is we're going to walk around each mesh. So right now we're working on mesh A, right? Only this little square, only this square. We don't care about anything else in the circuit. We're gonna walk around this guy and basically um, we're gonna do Kirchhoff voltage law. We're gonna sum the voltage drops as we go around that circle and set it equal to zero because that's what Kirchhoff voltage law is, right? You can take any path in a circuit. As long as you come back to the same spot, the sum of the voltage drops as you go around have got to be equal to zero. We've talked about that at great length when we talked about Kirchhoff voltage law. So the only thing that you need to be careful about, just like anything with circuit analysis, is the sign convention, right? So the sign convention. So how does the sign convention work? Whenever you are traveling around a path in a circuit and you come across a, a voltage drop, if you go from plus to minus, and we've been talking about this for a long time, so this is nothing new. When you go from plus to minus, like through a resistor, in the direction of the voltage drop, we count it as positive when we're writing our Kirchhoff voltage law equations or our mesh current equations. When we encounter a voltage rise from negative to positive, we always treat that as negative. You have to have some kind of sign convention. It doesn't really matter if, how you do it. It's just that a voltage rise has to be one sign and a voltage drop has to be the opposite sign so that you can keep track of everything. So in this case, if we start here and we, we go around this way, the first thing we encounter is a voltage rise. It is, it is going from negative to positive through the source. So that is treated as a negative in our mesh current equation. So we literally write negative 40 because we're summing voltage drops. This is 40 volts, it's negative because of the way it's oriented. All right, now we get up here to the two ohm resistor. Now we're, again, we're traveling around like this. And one thing I wanna say before we get any farther, is that this I that's labeled here, this is what we're trying to calculate, and this V naught is what we're trying to calculate. Much like the, the node voltage method, you don't mess with that stuff, the, the labels on the drawings, until the final step of the answer. In other words, don't try to write your mesh currents in terms of I and V naught. It's just gonna confuse you. Write your mesh currents, I, A, I, B, I, C, calculate the answers, and then at the very end, go back and figure out what I must be and what V naught must be. Um, so you can kind of ignore those labels for now here in the beginning. Only worry about what you have, you, you have yourself labeled, which is the mesh current. So we're getting up to the two ohm resistor. Now, when we label a mesh current like this, IA, what we're basically saying is that there's some current, IA, we don't know what it is, it's circulating in this mesh here, right? And there's some IB that's kind of circulating in this mesh, and there's some IC kind of circulating in this mesh uh, there. So forget right now how that could make physical sense. I'll explain it all later. But if you just pretend with me for a second that this IA is circulating, once you get up to the two ohm resistor, if there really is a current IA going this way, then there's gonna be a voltage drop, plus minus, because it's going through the two ohm resistor, plus minus. All right, so you're going in the direction of the mesh current, clockwise, plus minus. So that means you treat this as a plus, because the voltage drop is gonna go from plus to minus. It's gonna be a drop. What would the voltage drop be across this? Well, if the current's IA, then it's gonna be IA times two, because V is equal to IR, okay? So if the current is IA in this mesh, then the voltage drop across this resistor is IR, and then it's oriented with a plus sign because of the direction that we talked about, okay? Now, so far it's been pretty easy. Negative 40 because of the sign, the direction that we're going, and then it's positive because of the voltage drop across this resistor, I times R. Now when we get to the eight ohms, we have to be a little careful. And this is kind of the magic of the mesh current method right here. What is the current? We want to find the voltage drop across this resistor, obviously. Um, and we know, by the way, that we're going down like this. So we need to figure out what would be the voltage across this resistor. Well, it's going to be I times R, right? I times R. But what is the current in that leg? What is the current in that leg with the eight ohm resistor? 
Well, you might say, well, I'm doing a mesh current, so this is the current IA, so it's gonna be IA times eight plus IA times eight. But that's not really right, because notice right next door, we have a, another mesh current, IB, that we're saying is circulating this direction. So what you really have, if you think about it, if you follow this current here, IA in this leg, if you can pretend for a second, I sub A is going down like this, because look at the direction of the arrow, it's going down this leg. IB, if you look at the direction of the arrow, is going up. So what you have, and it's all fictitious, okay? This is not really happening. This is just a solution technique. You label IA, IB, and IC. Now we're talking about a resistor that's on the border of two meshes. So IA is going down based on the way we drew it, and IB is going up in the very same leg. So they're fighting each other. IA is going down, IB is going up. So what's the current in that, uh, in that actual branch? Well, it's not IA or IB. It is IA minus I. B. This is the current, you know, fictitiously right now, in this resistor. Because we're saying that IA should be going down, we're saying that IB should be going up. So if we take IA minus IB, that's the net current flowing down. Okay? If we take this current and multiply by 8, that's I times R. That's the voltage drop across that resistor. So we've taken care of the 40 volt source, we've taken care of the voltage drop across this, we've taken care of the voltage drop across this, so we set it equal to zero. This is basically a Kirchhoff voltage law. We have summed the voltage drops around this mesh, and we've basically set it equal to zero. The magic of the mesh current method is that anywhere that there's a boundary like this, you find out what the current actually is by subtracting the mesh currents that border it, okay? Now also, I want to make sure that you understand that it's very important. We subtracted IA minus IB. We didn't do it the other way. We didn't do IB minus IA because since we're walking around the mesh in this direction, we want there to be a voltage drop plus to minus across this 8 ohm resistor. If there's a voltage, forget about V naught, what I've labeled here in red. That has nothing to do with what I'm talking about. I'm saying that as we walk around, if I want to put a plus sign here, okay, then there needs to be a voltage drop plus to minus so I can go through a voltage drop. In order for there to be a voltage drop plus to minus, then there has to be a net current flowing down through this leg. So I'm assuming in this case, there's a net current going down. Therefore, it must be IA minus whatever IB is. The first current that I pick when in my subtraction is gonna basically Im imply what direction I'm hoping this current is flowing in. So I'm saying it's going down. Let's continue the problem. Let's do the other mesh currents, solve the problem, and then as we do more and more of these problems, you'll get a lot of practice with how to write the mesh current equations, and I think you'll see a little bit more about um, how, we, how we proceed. So, let's go ahead and simplify this. This is gonna be negative 40 plus two times IA plus over here, eight times IA minus eight times IB is equal to zero. So, IA is here, 8IA is here, so I'm gonna have 10IA is here, minus 8IB is here. I have negative 40, let me move it to the other side of the equal sign, like this. 10IA minus 8IB is equal to 40, and let me just go ahead and put like a little asterisk there, because that's gonna be an important equation. Basically, we're gonna solve a system of equations just like we always do, um, and this is the equation. Now notice that we have mesh currents IA, IB, and IC. So we're gonna need three equations for three unknowns. This is the first equation. We're gonna have another equation for mesh current B, another equation for mesh current C, and then we're gonna be able to solve the system for, for these variables here, which will then solve the whole problem. Another thing I'd like to point out to you is, this is one reason why I think the um, mesh current method is actually a little bit easier to deal with, because notice in the node voltage method, because you were going up to the node, and subtracting and dividing by a resistor, you always had a lot of division going on. You always had all kinds of stuff divided by numbers and then you had to clear the fractions and, or deal with decimals or something like that. Mesh current is actually easier because there's no, there's no big fractions everywhere to clear out. So once you write your mesh current equation down, it's very easy to distribute in and, and simplify your terms. You wanna write it in terms of the same ordering of the variables, I, A, I, B, and I, C for each equation so you can do your matrix method, okay? So the next, let me switch colors to purple. Now we're going to deal with mesh current B, okay? For mesh current B. So, so here we go. Let's write mesh 
B, like this. So let's start kind of at the corner. We need to go through the 8 ohm resistor, then through the 6 ohm resistor, then through the 6 ohm resistor here, and then we're done. All right. So what is the voltage drop across the 8 ohm resistor? All right. Well, it's IR. What is the current I through this resistor? So again, you're now what you have done before is totally separate. Throw it away. You leave it for later. Now you're only focused on the middle mesh. You don't really care so much about the other ones too much anyway. So the way you write this since you're trying to write the voltage drop across this resistor, is you want to write it as I B minus I A times eight. Make sure you understand this. The current through the eight ohm resistor is going to be, in this case, I B minus I A. And the reason we write it as I B minus I A is because I want to assume, since I'm walking around it, the mesh this way, I want to assume that the actual net current in this leg is actually flowing up. So if I'm going to assume it's flowing up, that's going to give me a voltage drop plus to minus, which is going to let me treat it as a positive sign. Because remember, when you're doing your Kirchhoff voltage law, when you encounter a voltage drop from plus to minus, you treat it as a positive sign. So I'm going to pretend I have plus to minus here. So I do IB minus IA because IB is going up, IA is going down. Notice that this is exactly backwards from the way we wrote it in the original mesh. Basically. Each mesh current equation you work on, you're basically going to pretend you have positive voltage drops everywhere you can, and you write your current equations in terms of that. So it doesn't matter that in the previous equation I was pretending the current was going down in this resistor, and in this equation I'm pretending the current's going up. It doesn't matter. Each equation you write in terms of how you would like to, um, pretending that you have a positive voltage drop through all of these resistors, basically. Okay, so when we get up to the 6 ohm resistor, it's just going to be IB times 6. So I'm going to do it as IB times 6. It's positive because this mesh current is flowing like this, from positive, negative. I'm going to have an implied positive to negative, which I'm going through as a voltage drop. So I get a positive sign in my mesh current equation. And then now when I get to the 6 ohm resistor, again, I want to pretend the actual current in this leg is going down because I want to pretend I have a voltage drop plus to minus so that when I go through it, I can treat it with a positive sign. So if I'm pretending the current's down, then the way I write this current is IB minus IC times 6. IB is going down. IC is going up, fighting it. So the net current down is IB minus IC, and that's everything in the whole loop or the whole mesh, so we, we set that equal to zero. Okay, so now that we've got that done, we can distribute that. So we have eight times IB minus eight times IA plus six times IB plus six times IB minus six times IC is equal to zero. And now we collect terms. So all the IAs we have, this is the only IA I have, so negative eight IA and IB, I have a 6 and a 6, which is going to give me a uh, 12. And then a 12 plus 8 is going to give me 20. So I have a 20 IB. So I have IA and IB all taken care of. IC is right here, negative 6 IC. And there's no other constant term, so we just leave it equal to 0. And this is the second mesh current equation that we're going to basically use to solve for our system of equations. Okay. Notice that we're writing our final equations in the same form. I, IA, IB, IC. This one was IA, IB. Of course, there's no IC, so you just leave it there. We're writing it in the same ordering so that we can easily dump it into a matrix. All right, so let's continue on and do the mesh equation for I sub C. And then once we're done with it, we'll solve the problem. We'll come back and reinforce how we wrote our mesh current equation. So let's go back up to I sub C and write a, a mesh current equation starting from this corner going through the 6 ohm, through the 4 ohm, through the 20 volt, and you know, back to where we started. So if we're going through the 6 ohm resistor up like this, we're going to pretend and assume we have a voltage dr drop from plus to minus, right? So that we can write it in a positive sense in our equation. So if we assume that, then we're going to assume I sub C is bigger, I sub C is going up, IB is coming down. So we treat it as IC minus IB. That's the current multiplied by the 6 because I times R, R is 6 ohms. So again, we treat it as IC minus IB because that's going to be the net current flowing up. 
Then we get to the 4 ohm resistor. The only current up here is I sub C. We have an implied plus minus because we're going in the direction of the current flow. So we just say plus I sub C times 4. Okay, I sub C times 4 is going through there. And then finally we get through there to the 20 volt. Notice that when we go through, we're going from a plus to a minus. And anytime you go plus to minus, we carry that as a positive sign in our equations. So plus 20 is equal to zero. All right, so that is the third and final mesh current equation. So I'll say mesh C like this. Now let's distribute in. What we have here is six I sub C minus six times I B plus four I sub C plus 20 is equal to zero. So we don't have any I sub A's anywhere, so we can't do anything with that. So we have a negative six I B. I sub C is six plus four is 10. 10, whoops, not an equal sign, we have a plus sign here. Plus 10 times I sub C. Now we have a plus 20, let's move it to the other side of the equal sign, like this. So we have negative six IB plus 10 IC is equal to negative 20. And we're gonna put an asterisk by this. So let's take stock of where we're actually at. And I'll go over again one final time before we close the lesson how we arrived at our mesh current equations. But for now, let's just say we arrived at this mesh, mesh equation which we simplified to this, this mesh, mesh equation, which we got to this, and then this mesh equation, which we simplified to this. So we have three equations, we have three unknowns. And you can solve these three equations any way you like. You can put them into a calculator if you have a solver, if you're comfortable doing that. Um, it's honestly just as easy, just as fast to just do a matrix method quickly. I'll show you how I do it on the board. It takes you an extra two minutes may maybe, and then you have a full record of everything you were doing as far as sol showing your work on your paper. If you make a mistake solving it, you're gonna get most credit for the problem. If you dump these equations in into a solver in your calculator, that's fantastic. If you get the right answer, great. If you type them in wrong and you get the wrong answer, your professor is not gonna give you as much credit because they're not they're gonna, not gonna know what the heck you were doing, really, is the reason. So, if I were you, I mean, there's many ways to do it, but if I were you, I would um, solve this guy with a matrix method. So, and it just takes a few lines to do. So what we know about matrix math is that we can write any equation as A times X is equal to B, where X is basically the unknowns. In this case, they're I, A, I, B, and I, C, okay? So the way you wanna write it, the matrix A is the coefficient matrix of everything on the left-hand side of the equation. So for mesh A, it's 10, negative eight, and zero because there's no IC. So we write 10, negative eight, and zero. For mesh B, it's negative eight, 20, and negative six. So we say negative eight, 20, and negative six. And for mesh C, there's no IA, so we write a zero, then a negative six, then a 10. Zero, negative six, 10. You need to make sure and put these zeros in, in places where the variables aren't present. And then we multiply this by whatever we're solving for, IA, IB, IC. And that's equal to the right-hand side, which is the B matrix. So it's gonna be 40, uh, then zero, then negative 20. So it's gonna be 40, uh, zero, negative 20. This is the matrix form of the system of equations. If you think about it, if you mul actually multiply this matrix, it'll be multiply this direction times this, and that's gonna equal 40. This direction times this is gonna equal zero. This direction times this is gonna equal this. This reproduces the systems of equations that we're actually trying to solve. So we know when we write a, um, when we write a, uh, a matrix equation like this, that the answer, which is what we're trying to find, is IA, IB, and IC. This is what we're trying to find, this column vector here. So the way we do that is we take the inverse of matrix A, multiply by B. This is an equation, you can do anything to both sides. Take the inverse of A, multiply it, that's gonna wipe out this matrix. Of course we do it to both sides, so the inverse of A times the B matrix is gonna give you what, we, what we're trying to find. Okay, so this is how I write it on my paper. You need to type this matrix in to, um, into your calculator and take the inverse of it. And I think any professor is gonna to be totally fine with you doing an inverse of a three by three matrix. When you do it, you're gonna get the following. 0 0.164, 0 0.080, 0 
0 0.048. 0 0.080, 0 0.100, 0 0.060, 0 0.048, 0 0.060, 0 0.048, 0 0.136. Okay, so that is this, and then obviously you still have to multiply by this column vector over here, which is 40, 0, negative 20. So 40, 0, negative 20 like this. So you type this uh, matrix in your calculator, you calculate the inverse, type this column vector in, and then you multiply it oriented the way I have here. And what you're gonna then find is IA, IB, IC, which is a column vector that we care about, is gonna be equal to 5.6, 2.0, negative 0 0.8. So this means that IA is 5.6, amps, IB is 2.0 amps, and IC is negative 0.8 amps. So we found the mesh currents, and I've told you more than once that once you find the mesh currents, you've actually solved the circuit. You don't have any, you can find anything else once you know the mesh currents. So our original problem didn't actually ask us find the mesh currents, it said what is the value of the current I here, and what is the value of the voltage drop across the 8 ohm resistor, we're calling it V0. This guy is actually the easiest to find because this I sub A is circulating, quote unquote, in this mesh. Outside here on the outer boundary, the value of the current in this outer boundary is I A. And it's in the same direction as the arrow here. So it's very easy to say that the current I is equal to I A, which is just 5.6 amps. That's what you would circle on your test. Now. Let me ask you this, how do you find the voltage drop across the 8 ohm resistor? So what's the current in this leg? And also notice our voltage is oriented plus to minus. So let's assume for a second that the current is going down, which would produce a voltage drop like this. How do we find the current as it flows down, assuming it does flow down? Well, I sub A is circulating down, but we also have I sub B, which is circulating up. So we take I A minus I B. So we say V naught is equal to I A minus I B, that's the current in the 8 ohm resistor, times 8 ohm. So uh, V is equal to I R. The reason we do the subtraction is because we have two mesh currents that border this resistor. One's going down, one's going up. So we subtract them for a net current going down. I A is down, B is up. So I A minus I B gives us a net current down times the 8 ohm resistor. Okay, I sub A is 5.6. I sub B is 2.0, like this. And then so V naught, uh, when you subtract this guys, 3.6 times eight is gonna give you 28.8, and what's the unit? It's volts. So, these are the values. Okay, so I need to talk about, I would like to talk about several things here because it's our very first mesh current problem. The following ones that come are going to be, I don't wanna say faster paced, but I'm gonna assume that you understand some of these things that I'm about to talk about as we go through the rest of the problem. So I'm not gonna take time to discuss every little nuance of the solutions of the, of the forthcoming problems. But for now, I would like to say a few things. When we find the mesh currents, okay? Notice in this circuit, the mesh current A is circulating over here. Mesh current C is circulating over here. So if I asked you, what would be the value of the current flowing down through, you know, through this, and going down this direction? You would look at the circuit and say, well, that's gonna be I sub C, because I sub C is flowing over here. That part makes sense. Um, in the IB circuit, if I said, in this mesh here, if I said, what is the current flowing through the six ohm resistor, let's say this way, then you would say, well, that's equal to I sub B, because I've labeled it here, it's circulating in this mesh. So basically, whenever you have the mesh currents, you can use those values. Those, those are the values of the current flowing in the circuit in the meshes. The only gotcha is if I start asking you for currents that flow in these resistors that border the two meshes, like the 8 ohm and the 6 ohm. So if I ask you, just like I did a minute ago, what's the current flowing here? Well, you can't just say it's IA, even though IA is going down, because you have IB that's fighting it, flowing up. So you have to subtract them. IA is down, IB is up, so you subtract them, that's the net current gonna be flowing down, as I've drawn it here. 
If I say, what's the current flowing in the six ohm resistor? You can't just say, oh, it's IB and be done because you have an IB component flowing down in this leg and you have an IC component flowing up in this leg and they're fighting each other. So the net current's gonna be IB minus IC flowing through the six ohm resistor. So anytime you're finding currents, a net currents that are flowing through these resistors that border the meshes, you basically always have to subtract the mesh currents to get the actual current flowing through these elements. But everywhere else, like here, we're not bordering anything else. It's just IA flowing through here. It's just IA flowing through the 40 volt source. It's just IB flowing through the six ohm resistor. And it's just IC flowing through the four ohm resistor and through the 20 volt source. So that's important to know because a lot of times we'll ask you, hey, what's the power, uh, power uh, absorbed by the you know, 8 ohm resistor? And you have to find the current in order to find the power and you need to know that in order to find the current, I've got to subtract these adjacent mesh, uh, mesh currents to find the current in that resistor. So that's important. The other thing I want to say is, notice that when you calculate your mesh current answer, sometimes you can get a negative result. That's fine, it's just like node voltage. I mean, you set it all up based on your drawing and then you solve it and then you get an answer and sometimes the answer is positive. That just means that the way you drew it is correct. Your guess was correct. Sometimes you might get negative, which means it's backwards from the way you actually drew it. So what this means is I sub C really doesn't go this direction. I sub C really flows the other way, which kind of makes sense because I have a 20 volt source here. I expect it to be able to supply some current that would mean the current would be coming out of the source. So that really means it flows the other way. Um, it doesn't mean you go back and change your drawing or anything, it just means it's a negative answer. You just do it, you just leave it like that, explaining that the negative sign means that your direction was backwards from the way you draw it. So those are two things I wanted to point out, sort of like in conclusion, um, to the answer we have. Now I wanna briefly go back over this problem and say that when you're given a mesh current problem, you had first identify the meshes, we have three of them. We know we're gonna need three equations because we have three meshes. We write a mesh current clockwise, another mesh current clockwise, and another mesh current clockwise, and for each mesh, we go sum the voltages as we go around those loops. As you sum the voltages, if you encounter a voltage rise, you treat it as negative, that's why we did this. If you encounter, if you encounter a voltage drop, which is like what we got here, when we went through this direction, it was a voltage drop, we treat it as positive. That's why the 20 volts was treated as positive here. As you go through resistors, you basically, in this case, we pretend IA is circulating this way, so there's a voltage drop here. So we treat it as positive. That's why we did IA times two positive. When we get to resistors that border adjacent meshes, you have to subtract the adjacent mesh currents to find the current flowing here, but you basically assume that as you walk through it, you're going to encounter a voltage drop. You, you just make that assumption, even though it may not be true. So you pretend that there's plus minus here. And so in order to get that, you need to pretend the current is going in the direction that you're walking around it. And if you're gonna pretend that that's true, it's gotta be IA minus IB. That's why we did IA minus IB here. All right, so when we get to the next mesh, we're going in this direction. So we're going in the opposite direction through the eight ohm resistor. So again, we wanna pretend that the voltage drop is plus minus in the direction of our travel. Forget about V naught. That is something you deal with at the end of the problem. But in the interim, we're pretending to have a voltage drop across this from plus to minus. That means there needs to be a current going up. That means that I need to do IB minus IA. So IB minus IA times eight, that's I times R. When we get to the six ohm resistor, it's just a voltage drop through it, plus to minus, so it's IR. And then when we get to this border, we go around like this. We gotta pretend the current's going down, um, so we do IB minus IC. Another way of looking at it, basically, is whenever you're traveling around your meshes, you basically, if you get to a border with a resistor that borders two meshes, you basically always pretend that the current is actually flowing in the direction that you're traveling through the resistor. That's basically what you do. So when we get to here in this mesh, we pretend the current's going down. When we get over here to this mesh, we pretend the current's going down if we're looking at this mesh. When we get to the third mesh going the opposite direction through the six ohm resistor, we pretend that the current is actually flowing up. So whichever way you're pretending the current's flowing is how you have to do your subtraction. If you forget this little, little part of it, then you're gonna get sign errors in all of your equations um, that are be inconsistent with one another. So make sure you, you, you do due diligence as we go around it. So I'm gonna give you more practice with that as we do more problems, but that is basically how you set up your mesh current equations. 
you simplify them and then you solve them. The, the rest of the solution is the same thing that we've been doing uh, all along. Once we finally got to the answer, we said, okay, this current i is just whatever ia is equal to. That's the answer. And then in order to find v naught, I have to calculate i times r. v naught is drawn in this manner. So I have to pretend the current is really going down. So I say ia minus ib times the resistance. So i times r. And then you get the voltage there. So uh, hopefully that makes some sense to you. Uh, I would encourage you, solve this problem on your own. Just go back. Grab a sheet of paper, solve it yourself. Even though you've seen the solution, it's still going to help you. All of these solution techniques for circuits, none of them are hard, but they all have little gotchas with the sign convention. If you, if you just kind of just willy-nilly do something, with, you don't really understand what you're doing, you're just kind of writing some stuff down as you go around in a loop, you're going to miss signs and you're going to get the wrong answer and you're not going to know why. So you have to force yourself to understand what I'm talking about when I talk about the sign conventions and how you're doing it so that you'll get the answer every time. So solve this guy yourself. Make sure you get the right answer. Follow me on to the next section. We're going to do more and more problems, a little bit more complicated, a little bit tricky here and there, but not that bad really. Overall, mesh current is not that bad. It's not that hard. The equations themselves are easier to deal with than node voltage in my opinion. So that's a, that's a bonus. And uh, honestly, I like working with mesh current uh, equations better than node voltage method. And so as we go through the, the future problems, you'll see what I'm talking about. So I'm Jason with MathTutorDVD.com. Go practice this guy and then follow me to the next section for more practice with mesh currents.